All right, at this time, I call to order the regular board meeting of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners on Monday, February the 7th, 2022 at 6 p.m. here at the Franklin County Justice Center in Carnesville, Georgia. We note for record that we have a quorum consisting of all five commissioners present for tonight's hearing. We want to welcome everyone, and we just ask that in light of the ongoing public health crisis that everyone continue to practice appropriate social distancing measures and wear a mask if you feel like it's appropriate. This time we're going to have an invocation, and then we want to ask everyone to remain standing for the pledge. So please stand. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to meet tonight, and we just pray that you would give us wisdom and guidance as we consider the decisions for Franklin County and on, on the behalf of the people of Franklin County. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of tonight's meeting agenda. So at this time, is there a motion to approve the meeting agenda as a presented? I'll make a motion that we approve the meeting agenda as presented. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Swells has made the motion to approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second? No, second. All right, thank you. Commissioner Foster, a second to the motion. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to approve the agenda as presented signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry four to zero, and the agenda for tonight's meeting is approved as presented. The next item on the agenda is a personnel report. So, Mr. Turner, do you have anything for us tonight? Yeah, just um, one thing real quick that we just want to welcome aboard our new uh, HR payroll clerk, uh, Ms. Tracy Claiborne, sitting right behind me. Thank you. Welcome, Ms. Claiborne. Uh, coming from, she came uh, retired from Gwinnett County, uh, so we're happy to have her join us out here. Okay, we're glad. We're glad to have you on board. Heard a lot of good things about you. Okay, anything else? All right, thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the prior meeting minutes from the month of January, including a public hearing on January the 3rd, 2022, a regular board meeting on January the 3rd, 2022, a board of appeals hearing on January the 25th, 2022, a work session on January the 25th, 2022, and a joint board of commissioners industrial building authority meeting on February the 2nd. 2022. All the commissioners have been provided with a copy of the draft minutes for these meetings. Do any of you know of any corrections that need to be made? Okay. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the prior meeting minutes as presented? I'll make a motion to approve the prior meeting minutes as presented, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Wester has made the motion to approve the prior meeting minutes as presented. Is there a second? I second. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Franklin has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to approve the prior meeting minutes as presented signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry four to zero and the prior meeting minutes are approved as presented. This time we're going to open the meeting for public comment and during this portion of the meeting, any member of the public can speak on any topic of concern they would like to address to the board. This is a comment section only. If you have questions, we're going to ask that you write those down and give those to our clerk, which our clerk is not here tonight, uh, but you can give them to our county manager and uh, assistant county manager, Scott Delosier, and then somebody will respond to those questions in a few days. When you come up to the podium, please start by giving your name and address to our clerk or at least to the county manager. They can write that down. Uh, each person must limit their comments to five minutes or less, and each person may only speak once. Uh, the clerk or will have a timer over there on the table. And you can keep track, look at that and keep track of how many minutes you have left. Uh, members of the public are required to follow the same rules of decorum as each of the commissioners. This means that you're respectful, you're civil, and you avoid any personal attacks. Uh, and we just ask that everyone help us facilitate a fair and impartial meeting tonight. Be courteous. Uh, we'll give each person sufficient time to express your concerns. And we just ask that you are courteous and respectful of, every, of everyone else. Uh, please take care to observe the five-minute time limit. This will be strictly enforced. Uh, members of the public are not permitted to interrupt while others are speaking, uh, and we respectfully ask that you refrain from side conversations. It's really important that everyone be able to be heard and that everybody have a chance to speak. So this time, if you have a public comment and you want to raise your hand and wait to be recognized, we'll have you come up one by one. Would anyone like to speak? Anyone have a public comment? 
Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on to the next item. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is number seven, the items for discussion. And first we have 7A, uh, the Blight Citizen Protection by Beverly Folsom. So we're going to have her come up and speak. And just as a reminder, there's a five minute time limit and this includes question and answer. So is Ms. Folsom here? Okay, come on up, Ms. Folsom. I saw Scott test in the time. Yeah. I, got my, I brought my own just to be safe. Okay, thank you. I'm Beverly Folsom. I live at 67 PJ's Inlet, Livonia, Georgia. I'm here to talk about a setback from my stack house, Scott. Denied. <laughs> take, take care of short meeting, right? No, uh, actually, I'm here to talk about the residential sections of the county, uh, especially in District 2 and in Gumlog. As you all are well aware, they pr uh, present some unique challenges and opportunities for the county since we're so densely zoned and uh, sometimes creates some challenges for us as well. My neighbors, most of the gala here, are, are present for a little, okay. little support. But uh, we've been very successful to revitalize our little neighborhood. It's 25 acres, 50 lots. Many of us own multiple lots as we buy up what becomes available to us and what we can uh, readily access to continue revitalizing. That's mm -hmm. paid off to the county in dividends. Our, our tax base has almost doubled, and I could not find another 25 acre residential track of land that even comes close to our contribution. You know, part of that's because we have we don't have a lot of stem miles like some of the other subdivisions, but um, we also have a lot of challenges still ahead of us as we still, as Mr. Foster saw, still have some opportunities to still improve our, our neighborhood and we want to keep doing so. Um, we feel like the county needs a, a, a strategic high-level approach to blight and redevelopment. Department of Community Affairs, USDA, HUD, Georgia Mountain Regional Commission, they all agree for a community to flourish, you must tackle the blight and the crime that comes with it, otherwise you're hindering your marketability, your growth, and your tax potentials. We all know there's many structures in this county that are obsolete and unsafe. They contribute virtually, and in some cases, literally nothing to our tax base, yet they utilize many resources. In my experience, the majority of these places are not owner-occupied, many are vacant, and they hinder the rest of our efforts. The sheriff and the marshal make the biggest impacts on our daily lives, in our communities, and our property values. You cannot undervalue their effectiveness in their role. <clears throat> As a community, we're hungry for collaboration, community outreach, and engagement. You know, and while I understand there's budget constraints, you know, there needs to be open dialogue about that. And while I understand COVID has bogged down the court systems, you know, we also need to agree that none of us need to accept living with illicit activity that the blighted properties bring and that something can be done about those things. The marshals are doing a great job, but our cycle to dispose of cases takes too long. We shouldn't be conjoling the same offenders over and over again. And I'm going back to Officer Ayers and Officer Haley and all the times that the marshal position has been open. That, that should never happen again. We need a streamlined system. Not all offenses should require a court appearance. We need more frequent courts to clear cases faster, and we need a budget for pu public messaging. And quite honestly, we need to start finding folks. Uh, you know, not to be punitive, but as Dr. Makerson, as you said, to change culture, to change behavior. Uh, you know, and let's find, let's use those fines to promote public safety and finance projects like, oh, I don't know, an animal control shelter. You know, we all deal with the problems that, that loose dogs running in the community cause. You know, we're, we constantly feed and help the dogs that are at the Dollar General down the street from us. Uh, you know, shoot, we got renters on quarter acre lots with seven and nine dogs. That the commute, while we don't have a dog ordinance, that does create a nuisance for us. Uh, and since Mr. Martin's here, and since some other folks are here, Let's talk about a vacant building register. 
White County has a vacant building register. Glenn County has a vacant building register. That means properties, whether they're privately held or bank owned, if that property goes vacant, they have to register with the county and it gives the county a point of contact. It uh, opens that property up for inspection that it's properly mothballed so that doors aren't hanging open and windows aren't broken. It's properly sheltered. We're going to have to cut you off there, but what, what I would suggest, we appreciate that what y'all been doing, uh, and we know that blight is an issue, and we're taking steps to address that. But but I would suggest come back at our February work session because we'll, you know, we're going to continue to work on this and look at some things. I would love to, and actually, I made you all a notebook. I did some research. If you don't mind me sharing it, I'd like to leave each of you with a copy. That's fine. And I want to plant seeds, you know, and I know things. I know... Rome wasn't built in a day, and cultures don't change overnight. We've been up here five years, and this is the first time. Well, why don't you go ahead and give us those, and then, like I said, come, plan to uh, get back on the agenda for the work I session. absolutely will. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And I'll Mr. Turner. Okay. That would be good. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Folsom. The next item on the agenda is 7B, the library update with Maggie West, and she let us know kind of late today that she could not come, so we're going to uh, omit that or, or leave that off because that speaker's not here. Uh, the next item on the agenda is 7C, the alcohol ordinance amendment. Uh, this is a second reading of an alcohol ordinance amendment that we've looked at prior to that. At our regular meeting on August the 2nd, the board voted to adopt an ordinance that regulates alcohol sales in the unincorporated areas of Franklin County. At that same meeting, we, the board approved calls for referenda in November of 2021 at the general election for sales by the drink package sales, Sunday sales by the drink, and Sunday package sales. All four of these referenda passed in the November general election. And so at our regular January 3rd board meeting, we held a first reading on an ordinance that would amend that first prior ordinance that we passed on August the 2nd to reflect the results of the referenda. So tonight is the second reading of this ordinance and we'll consider that for adoption. Uh, so commissioners at this time, is there a motion to adopt that uh, alcohol ordinance amendment? I'll make the motion to adopt the alcohol ordinance amendment. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Foster's made the motion to adopt the alcohol ordinance amendment. Is there a second to his motion? I'll second. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Swells has seconded the motion. Uh, this time we'll open it up for discussion and we'll begin with Commissioner Foster who made the motion. I just think having alcohol sales in the county will just help us diversify our tax base and get some money to take the burden off the taxpayers. That's the reason why I'm in favor of that. Okay. Commissioner Swales. Um, I just feel like the people um, showed up. You know, They made their voices heard with that vote. It's not an easy conversation. It's not something... You know, some people um, are comfortable with the thought of, and I understand why. I know a lot of people that in their lives have suffered uh, from alcohol, um, but it is a legal substance in the United States of America. It's a legal substance uh, in the state of Georgia and um, in every city in our county. Um, and I, uh, I tend to side with people making, um, you know, decisions for themselves uh, when they're legal decisions. All right, Commissioner Franklin, you have anything? I have nothing to say. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Wester. Uh, I'll just say this, that was the toughest vote I ever had to make my mind up on. Uh, I feel like it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, yes, you got to have the alcohol sales to bring in restaurants to these, uh, the exits that we have and everything. And, and bring them into the county and, and I do agree with that and I understand that. Uh, unfortunately, I understand the, the other side of alcohol and uh, what it can do with, uh, to families and everything. Uh, I've had firsthand knowledge and witness of it and uh, it's very hard for me to vote on it, but I will say this, the, the people have voted on it and I, I will not go against the people's wishes. Okay, thank you. I just say uh, I, I respect both sides of this issue, and I know that a lot of people feel strongly either for or against alcohol. Uh, our purpose in the fall when we first passed that ordinance was to say, let's give citizens, let's call for a referenda and let citizens decide that. And so that's what we did. And, of course, in the referenda, all four passed. 
by healthy margins. Uh, is there any more discussion before we move to a vote? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to adopt the alcohol ordinance amendment signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Okay. The motion will carry three to one, and the alcohol ordinance amendment is adopted. And let the record reflect we have a copy of this ordinance is attached to our official minutes, and it's also be made available for public inspection after tonight's meeting. All right, the next item on the agenda is the vaping ordinance. Uh, this will be a first reading. We talked about this at our prior work session uh, in January. We discussed with our attorney, with the magistrate judge, and school officials about the need uh, for an ordinance that would address vaping by students, particularly at the high school. Currently, state law already provides specific penalties for vaping by individuals under 21 years of age. However, our local, in talking to local officials, they've expressed some concerns that the state law would require individuals that are cited or charged to be taken to superior court. And many would like to see this handled locally in the magistrate court, uh, where they could use pre pretrial diversion programs that could maybe provide some education and counseling and lesser penalties that would steer students in the right direction before they incurred a criminal record. So tonight we're introducing a local vaping ordinance which will mirror the language in state law. Uh, according to our attorney, he's here tonight, Mr. Samuels, having a local ordinance will allow cases to be handled here in Franklin County's Magistrate Court. Is that correct, Mr. Samuels? Okay. Everyone has received a copy of this proposed ordinance, so I hereby introduce it into the record, and tonight will be considered a first record or first reading. We'll consider a second reading and adoption at our regular meeting in March. So, commissioners, do you have any questions about this or any comments? Okay. Let's uh, attach a copy of this ordinance to the official minutes, and we'll have that available for public inspection after tonight's meeting. And again, we're not voting on it tonight. This is just the first reading. The next item on the agenda is the tax levy resolution, item 7E. Last year, the school district proposed the SPLOS referendum, which was approved by voters on March the 16th, 2021, to authorize the school board to issue general obligation bonds in the amount of $21,700,000. The bonds would be repaid from revenue that was generated by SPLOS, but the Board of Education is required by state law to pass a resolution that commits itself, talking about the Board of Education, to raise taxes to cover the annual debt payments in the unlikely event that SPLOS revenue is not sufficient to do so. Uh, the Board of Commissioners must officially approve the tax millage each year for the Board of Education. So what we're being asked to do tonight is adopt a tax levy resolution on behalf of the Board of Education that will commit us to approving tax levies for the Board of Education to cover any portion of the annual bond debt that isn't covered by SPLOS revenue. And we last passed a version of this in 2018, as this is not the first time that this kind of SPLOS for the Board of Education has been approved. So, Commissioners, you've got a copy of that proposed ordinance, uh, and we're going to hereby introduce that copy of that resolution into the official record. Do any of you have questions about it? Commissioner. Okay. This time, is there a motion to adopt the tax levy resolution? I'll make a motion that we adopt the tax levy resolution by the Board of Education, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Wester's made a motion to adopt the tax levy resolution. Is there a second to the motion? No, second. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Foster has seconded the motion. Is there any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all, uh, all in favor of the motion to adopt the tax levy resolution signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry four to zero, and the tax levy resolution is adopted. Uh, we'll have a copy of this be attached to the official minutes and made available for public inspection after tonight's meeting. The next item on the agenda is 7F, the Board of Appeals findings. Um, at the hearing of the Board of Appeals uh, that we held on January 25th, we heard an appeal of a prior zoning decision on Neal Road. And at that hearing, the Board of Appeals, the Board of Commissioners acting as the Board of Appeals, voted to affirm the original zoning decision and deny the appeals. So, Commissioner, or the appeal. Commissioners, you've got a copy of the written findings from the appeals hearing that have been drafted by our legal counsel. So, this time I introduce a copy of those into our, our record. Is there a motion to adopt the written findings and direct that they be attached 
to the official minutes of the Board of Appeals hearing, which we approved earlier tonight. I'll make the motion that we approve the written findings of the Board of Appeals and that we include that uh, with our meeting for the Board of Appeals meeting that night, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Wester's made the motion. We're adopting the written findings uh, from the Board of Appeals hearing, and we're directing that they be attached to the official minutes of the Board of Appeals hearing. So is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Foster has seconded the motion. Is there any further discussion? Anything? Okay. Hearing no more, all in favor of the motion to adopt the written findings of the Board of Appeals hearing and direct that they be attached to the official minutes of the Board of Appeals hearing, which we approved earlier tonight, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry four to zero, and the written findings are adopted and will be attached to the minutes of the Board of Appeals hearing. All right, the next item on the agenda is 7G, residential zoning. I'm going to turn this over to Commissioner Swales, who asked to put that on the agenda. So, Commissioner Swales. Yeah, thank you for uh, allowing us on the agenda, <coughs> Chairman Mackinson. Um, <clears throat> we've, we've noticed um, just an influx of um, new life, new housing, new people coming to the area. A lot of them are... Uh, coming to the Livonia area, the Carnesville area. Um, but we've, we've started seeing some new housing developments in the county as well. And this is pretty new territory for all of us, I think. I think we're all kind of trying to figure things out and what to do with this growth and, you know, how is the county going to look in the next 5, 10, 15 years? Um, but I... W Personally, I didn't want to make strong statements um, about maybe what we could do to manage or what uh, potential conflicts might arise. I wanted to kind of see what was happening, how it was happening, and, and kind of see what others were thinking and what their concerns were. And so I've heard similar arguments from a lot of different people, and um, I've had a lot of the same type of discussions with a lot of people. And this is, in my mind, some of the concerns that I'm hearing uh, in the county, not as much in the city. But, you know, we are seeing larger developments, uh, more homes, you know, smaller lot sizes. And, um, and developers are doing everything that we're allowing them to do within those limitations. But the concerns I have, um, if we don't... Uh, do something is well there's infrastructure issues I think um, we've got to consider utilities expansion to parts of the county that currently aren't receiving those services um, there's emergency services that we try to provide to all of our county um, and for instance our fire departments you know the vast majority of our fire departments are volunteer based um, the thing with volunteer base, they do an amazing job. I think we have some of the best firefighters in all of North Georgia. But these gentlemen work uh, during the day, just like you and I do. Um, so if a major fire occurs at 12 o'clock, um, I think we have to consider response time. You know, especially larger housing developments that maybe are closer together. It doesn't take much of a fire for one house to jump to another house to jump to another house. And then you've got a very serious issue. Uh, we also had a situation in Royston uh, where there was, there was a fire downtown. Because the fire happened at night, uh, it was a full-scale attack from all firefighters to put out that fire. If they had not been available to put out that fire at that time, all of downtown Royston probably could have gone up in smoke if it had happened at lunchtime. Okay? That's the reality of, of, of that situation there. Um, we also, you know, we're considering facilities expansion. Um, uh, Commissioner Wester, myself, um, our county manager are, are already talking about, you know, what do we need to do to make our judicial system, uh, you know, adequate as far as facilities. Um, our fire and EMS, uh, we might need another building or two for our fire department, for our EMS department. Uh, we probably already need one, and that's just talking to our local EMS directors. Um, 
you know, we have we need a prison expansion of some sort. Um, so we've got that as well to consider. And then <clears throat> I think about our school system. Uh, the tax dollars that are generated from a 1,600 square foot, three bedroom, two bath house are not adequate to pay for that one student to go to school in Franklin County. The, the dollars don't make sense. There's not enough tax revenue generated from a household to provide uh, what's required for that one student to go to school. And so that's a concern as well. Um, other concerns that I'm hearing are about the character of the county. Now, we've been very um, proactive in the past few years about trying to update our character maps, uh, update our zoning maps, trying to figure out where the best places for certain types of growth, whether it be industry, whether it be um, you know rural or agricultural growth, whether it be uh, housing developments, those types of things. And <clears throat> I want to commend our planning and zoning department and Scott for doing an amazing job on that uh, and catching us up uh, over the past couple of years. But uh, I guess I, my question I'm asking myself and, and maybe the rest of y'all um, is, is the county quite ready for all the growth that we're seeing? Cities are designed for that type of growth. They're already set up and primed for residential growth. They have the infrastructure. They want it. They're asking for it. Um, and just like schools, you know, schools fit in cities because cities can provide what the schools need to, to thrive. That's how it works with new housing development, too. So uh, I just raise these things for us to think about and to talk about. Um, you know, if we don't get a grasp on it, we might actually be hurting some of the growth that we want. Um, if we don't, you know, consider uh, maybe lot size, um, things like that, we could potentially harm industrial development um, or current and future farming operations. So I'm not, nor will I ever be in favor of a moratorium uh, of new housing. I do think we need to consider expanding possibly lot size, um, which you know might alleviate some of this. It might might provide, um, you know, a two acre lot is probably someone that's going to build there is probably going to be a slightly bigger house. Um, it's probably not going to be um, a cookie cutter type, you know, situation, and it might generate more income for uh, for these services. Commissioners, would you have comments, questions? I, I've said all along, I was, I've been a little bit worried about the way this growth has really taken off and, and becoming a bedroom county for, you know, say Banks County or Hart County or Stevens County because of all of the industrial jobs that are, that are there currently. Uh, the growth concerns me about our EMS. Uh, we've been on that threshold for... I know probably about two years of, of where we're going to need to build a new EMS station and furnish it with EMS, everything. I mean, we're, we're close to that point. We've been on that threshold for a while. Uh, this is going to push it over if we continue to keep seeing subdivision after subdivision wanting to come in. Uh, I'm not against subdivisions whatsoever. I'm just concerned about us as a county being prepared. Uh, infrastructure, we're not there yet. Uh, not for a big subdivision to be coming in. Uh, what concerns me is, is I think it's in Jackson County, there is a 14,000 uh, home subdivision coming in. Think about that if they hit Franklin County right now. Do, do we have a minimum subdivision size? I mean, do we have a figure in our land development ordinance where so we mean, say so you can't the, have... The way it's written now is Five lots or fewer is considered a minor subdivision, mm -hmm. and that can be handled at the administrative level. Uh, once you once you hit that six lots, six lots or more is considered a major subdivision. But is there an upper limit? There, we don't have an upper limit negative. As long as so, if you have a hundred acre tract, we have a, a, a one acre minimum lot size. You take out roads that are be put in, you know, right away, green space, so on, road control stuff. Usually, you're, you're going to be taking about 15 percent of that usable land away. Once that's taken away, you just, if it's a one acre minimum lot and you got 85 usable acres, you can put 85 lots. 
and that's that's meeting setbacks, that's meeting buffer. I mean, there's still stuff you got to meet, you know, within that. But would a would a minimum, uh, if we considered a, a maximum number, I mean. I, I don't know what effect that would have well, because then you would just right yeah here. because then you just do another subdivision right beside it. I don't right. know if that well, would work. And I, I mean, that, and that's the issue. I mean, you know, how do you how would you even think about stopping that? But the, the problem comes in is where they're going to get the water from. Yeah. You know, you, and then you're going to have that many. You know, if you don't have sewers there, you're going to have that many septic tanks there. I mean, it, it's just you probably have to have two full-time firefighters in every department during the day. I what, would imagine. What would be the pros and cons of a two-acre lot minimum size? How would that affect things like uh, people who have land in Kuva? I, I'm not. I don't know about Kuva. Uh, that's me. Um, I think you would refer to tax assessor on on, on Kuva's stuff. Right. Um, you know. Well, what would be some of the the cons of, or, or I mean things to consider well, if we said know, okay we're going to increase the you know, lot say, size if you increase lot size there's a lot of there's a lot of three to four acre tracks out there right now and say you've got three acres and you want you want your you want to give your kid an acre to build their house on you, you, you there's going to be some restrictions there there's going to be I mean you're going to you, you go to a two acre lot size you're not you're not Putting out there that we don't want subdivision, but you, you you're putting out there that we don't want subdivision because no developer can make that dollar figure work unless you come in with a five hundred thousand dollar house and it's it's hard for developers to make a one acre lot size work. Uh, so uh, you know you go to a two acre lot size, you're pretty much going to be cutting out subdivision type developments in the county. Um, you know. You know, pro is going to be. I mean, you got more land for a lot, you know, more land to work with. But I mean, there's there's a lot of factors that go into that. Have have we have we approved? I don't think we've approved any subdivisions or land developments that are multifamily housing. It's all been single. It's all been single family. The detached. the cities have uh, Livonia and maybe some of the others have done multi. And, and I think if you consider the rate of completion of a subdivision out in the county, that's single traditional houses we, we have approved several in the last year and a half but i i would say it's going to take a while to fill those out but those multi-family ones are i think in, especially in cities are going to right. go up quickly yeah, so of course I'm, we don't have control over that but and the last i think five or six subdivisions we've approved in the last two years i can't remember the total number there's been out of those there's been 10 or 12 building permits that have been issued out of out of those out of all of them. combined. So I mean, it's slow. It's very slow. You're you're getting you're getting three to four times the amount of building permits and growth just from individuals just buying a lot and building a house and that sort of thing. Um, I think the largest subdivision that we had approved was 50 lots, and then the next the next one was like 20, right right into 25, you know, and then everything's been less than that. So it's not. You know, we, we haven't. I don't think we've had a lot of big subdivisions that are making a whole lot of. Um, we well, haven't had them yet. Right, we haven't had them yet. No. Uh, you know, right now the, the residential side of it is still strongly just individuals on individual lots, people coming in, or kids moving out, and getting some of their parents' land, that sort of thing. I mean, I know. Again, cities are already ready for that type of growth but Maybe. one thing that one thing that typically happens is a developer uh, that might want to build adjacent or right next to a city buys up the property talks with the city the city can annex at any point uh, and they can make their own rules for new housing development um, that is true um, I just feel like again um, it, <laughs> I think our, this is the time to be proactive, not yeah. reactive. I think our greatest opportunity to control some of that, I mean, when somebody comes to us and says, I have this land and I, I meet all the requirements of your ordinances and I want to have a subdivision, how do we legally say to them, well, no, you can't do it in, you know, in an arbitrary way? I think the, the key is to use our zoning map we're revising and our character map and designate where we want to see that because then when somebody comes and says, I want a subdivision here and it doesn't fit with that plan, then we have a rationale for saying, no, 
versus approving others that are in the right area that you know we've designated you know targeted for that Mm -hmm. but i don't know you know as it is if people come to us and they meet all the requirements and we passed a pretty comprehensive land uh, land use development use ordinance subdivision ordinance much better than what we've ever had i mean if they meet all those requirements what other basis do we use to just say, well, no, we think we have too many? You know, how, how do we do? I don't know the answer to that. Well, I mean, I think the simple fact is, I mean, there's no no denying we're going to grow. Yep. I mean, if you look at it, we are in one of the fastest growing corridors in the United States, and that being the corridor from Atlanta to Greenville. I mean, it, it's been labeled as one of the fastest growing corridors, corridors out there. And we're not going to, I mean, you're not going to stop growth. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, the thing that worries me is, is are we ready for it? That's that's where my concern comes in, because number one, that's going to put a burden on the school system if the population just blows up quickly, and then that's going to cause them to struggle. You're going to see them raising their uh, their taxes. I think they're going to see the biggest issue first in and, the cities then, because there's explosive growth there potentially. Well, and then on top of that, you got to stop and look. We have to we have to have that industry coming in also. Because if not, if you don't have that industry coming in also, these people that are moving in here are working outside of Franklin County. There's nothing to keep them in Franklin County to work other than just living here. And then you know if I mean if they're working in Athens, well guess what? They're stopping at Ingles and Kroger's and everything on the way home to buy their groceries. Well, we've lost that. Well, they're buying gas out there to get home on. We we have to make sure we're prepared to, for these people that are moving here to keep them here. And and I and I understand that. And I think we had a great meeting with the IBA. I and mean, I think that was a great meeting where we're all on the same page. We know what we're moving towards. And uh, you know the subcommittee meeting that we had right after that. I mean, we were in there for maybe 45 minutes, and I think a lot got accomplished in just that 45 minutes. But We've got to be prepared for this growth. But not just that, we've got to be prepared for industrial growth too. So, I mean, that's infrastructure. we got to get the infrastructure in place. And, you know, if we don't have the in- infrastructure to hold this, then we're behind the eight ball. Let's, let's give them, uh, oh, Commissioner yeah. Franklin, Commissioner Foster, opportunity. <clears throat> Y'all haven't said anything yet. We don't sit- want to dominate the conversation. <laughs> I was sitting here thinking about how long has it been since we've had a tout fee increase for a three-quarter uh, meter. Mm-hmm. I think we need to get with the adjoining counties and see what their tout fee is. I don't, I don't think we're on the bottom, but we're close to the bottom. And we, <clears throat> I think we need to increase the tout fee. <clears throat> We can't control the cities, but we can control the county with a tap fee increase. Now, I don't know. We'll have to get with Bubba to find out how we can do that legally, you know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but that's what I'd like to see. Mr. Foster. Yeah, I'm glad, Ron, uh, Commissioner Swells brought this up. It, it, all the growth concerns me. I just, I think we're, the school system, fire, EMS, Sheriff's Department, I think we're overwhelmed, and I just don't want us to be behind. So we need to, I don't know what the, what the answer is, but uh, we need to just make sure we got to get something in the plans because it scares me what what might be coming down the line. But then, te- te- oh, I'm sorry. I, I agree that you know we need the housing for the industry. We need both of those it's things. But but I'm not sure what the what the answer is to make that all work. But the the growth is concerns me a little bit. Well, ta- tagging on to Commissioner Franklin, I talked to uh, Mr. Lozier about we need to look at impact fees with our uh, subdivision ordinance. Because there, there are things there we could do. Right now, we currently don't have any impact fees, but there are things we can develop and add that can help with some of these issues, particularly infrastructure or increasing services. And I would guess that most counties around us have some sort of impact fees for this. And I don't think it's unfair to look at them and maybe implement that. Um, one thing that Tanya brought up at that last meeting and it was almost like a good thing, but I didn't think of it as a good thing. She said we're now a tier one community, which means that the businesses uh, current uh, and possible future get uh, the best tax credit per employee. And that might help, uh, you know, attracting some industry. But what that tells me is, is that we are 
we're one of the poorest communities. I'm not saying that lightly. We're one of the poorest communities. That's why you get that tier one. That's why they give those tax credits. Um, and kind of like you were saying, uh, Commissioner Wester, I don't want any growth, uh, any job type growth to be going to other counties. I think <clears throat> we are in danger of becoming a bedroom community. And the only way to support that type of community is through tax increases. And I don't know anybody in this room that wants to see that. Um, because I mean, that's, because to me, just, that's the last thing you should <coughs> want to do is put more burden on the taxpayers. Right? Yep. And um, it's not their fault. I think if we did change the lot size, and I'm not saying that's the direction, but it's not a permanent thing. Uh, it doesn't have to be. Um, it, it might just be a temporary measure uh, that we consider. Our, our lot size now is one acre. So if you've got sewer and public water, it's three quarter of an acre. If you got public water and septic, it's one acre. You got private water and septic, it's one and a half acre. You know, going back to what you said, you, you, the way you kind of control that is partly to do with infrastructure. So if you have if you have if you have a less restrictive lot size with those sewer, if you have public water and public sewer, that's going to attract developers to you know if this area doesn't have sewer or doesn't have water, but they know they can get a three quarter of an acre lot size, half acre lot size. That entices them to, to, to potentially run it at their cost. And that's also another way for the county to expand infrastructure. Hmm. You know, if you have it to where it's, if, you, if it's public water and septic and you go to an acre and a half for, you know, because we got a pretty robust water system for a rural county. Mm -hmm. We really do. Um, what we lack in on the, on the, the sewer. So, you know, if you, if you have, you might, you know, so say you go to an acre and a half if it's on septic and public water, but then you go to half an acre if it's public water and sewer. Well, then, 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 then you start getting developers that are saying, okay, well, we've got sewer here, we're not very far from it. Well, let's let's just fight the bullet, run it, and then we're also benefiting from that, especially put in impact fees, stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. You can, you can. That's a way to get infrastructure ran as well. Um, you know that. Infrastructure does dictate growth. They're going to naturally, they're going to come to where that infrastructure is already in place. Um, so, I, I guess the concern. I mean, I think that's good if we can get them to pay for running that sewage line and all. The only concern about that, though, is if you get several of them wanting to do that, then you're hitting the capacity that we're at at our sewage treatment center. And that, you know, that's something we have to look at too. Right. I mean, we have to pay attention there because. If we're going to have to add on there to be able to have the capacity for this growth, you know, we got to have that plan. Right. And, and I don't, I don't know if we've ever stopped yeah, to I mean, talk about that. You know, I mean, just in general. Right. You yeah. know, with this growth comes. Yeah. Exactly. And we are, we are, we are authorized, and, and, and John and the public works know the technical terms for it. But we, we have been authorized for increases on that. But that's when you look at your fee structure. Yeah. Your, your tap fees you know that's that should be those are those enterprise systems should be at the very least paying for themselves if not generating revenue so it, it might it might not be fun to increase rates to make sure they're self-sustaining but at the very least your sewer and water need to be <clears throat> they need to be self-sustaining mm -hmm. because if not then that's going to fall back on the taxpayers and sure. half of which might not even be using those services mm -hmm. well uh just a thought, I know Commissioner Swales talked about maybe going to a two acre lot. Uh, just in my thinking right now, I don't know if that's a bad idea to do it temporarily until we get our character map and all of that drawn up to where we can do have places to say, hey, this is where we want this growth of subdivisions and everything. You know, uh, I, I don't like, yeah, I'm, yeah, we've got, we've got a Quasi character map that was done a couple years back. It needs some work, but really, what we need to be looking character area map is good in, in in some regards, but I think we need to be looking at like a future land use map. Yeah, is what we need to kind of try to get to next and be the next piece of this. So you can say, okay, this is what our zoning map looks like currently. Let's put an overlay on top of that and say this is this is what the county has said. This is our plan. This is what we want it to look like. This is where we want these things, and that's. The character area map, the future land use map are, are, are 
different. Um, I think the future land use map is kind of different. I think that's more so what y'all are probably looking at and wanting is mm -hmm. y'all kind of say this is what we want, where we want it, what we want different things on in the county. And that'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that gives us more of a leg to stand on. And, you know, if it were if we were to have to deny, or you know, if we saw some division coming in, and we say, well, you know, it's surrounded by 15 chicken houses, probably not going to be a good idea. And we have that future land use map to say, yeah, this this doesn't fit our our. How long does that take to develop in your mind? I mean, it, with, with it, 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 with the right GIS capabilities and, and, and firm to do it, it could be done pretty quickly, um, as long as we have some sort of vision direction to go off of. You know, we you can get developed one pretty quickly because it's it's not as it's not as cumbersome as a zoning map where you have to go parcel by parcel. But you can kind of paint in a broader brush with the with the future land use map. Well, let's ask staff to come up with a short-term plan, too, maybe in the next couple of months. Make some recommendations on whether or not we should temporarily increase lot size. Because there may be some other things to think about that we haven't touched on tonight. But tap fees, impact fees, and have a plan for that. that maybe there's some short-term. The land use map is probably more intermediate. You know, We're not going to have that in a month or so. But we could maybe there are some steps we could take in the meantime you know, but we need to think it through at the same time and make sure we're not inviting some, you know, unintentional side effects to that, that, that in retrospect, we'd wish we hadn't done it. Mm -hmm. Is everybody in agreement with that? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe take two months and then y'all come back with us with a recommendation. Not that you need more. <laughs> well, he's thinking about something else. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is everybody, anybody else have comments on that? No. Okay. Um, Let's move on to the next agenda item, eight county managers report. So we'll turn that over to Mr. Turner. Yeah, just uh, the only thing we have really tonight is just taking a moment to thank the IBA and our partners um, for meeting with us and, and having our joint meeting last week. Uh, I think that was real productive for us. Uh, I think it's just going to be important for us to continue those conversations, follow through with everything else agreed upon in that meeting. Um, you know, like I said, these are partners we talked to. Staff talk to pretty often. Uh, I know we don't necessarily get the, the, the large meeting like that together very often, but the things that, you know, points we touch on pretty often on a regular basis, we, we talk to them regularly. So we want to make sure that we're good partners to each other. We're, I feel like we're probably after that meeting on the same page. Uh, we just need to make sure that um, there is still that open communication, make sure we're still having that follow through to things that we all, that we all agree upon. Uh, and I think we can really help develop the county in a positive structure uh, with that. Uh, this is really the only thing I had to make. Okay. Do you have any other announcements? So we're going to move on to the next agenda item as announcements. Uh, no, that's, uh, I kept the light tonight because I'm doing dual role. <laughs> uh, I want to thank Mr. Turner. We have, everybody knows by now that uh, Franklin County, in partnership with True Vista, received a, a governor's uh, grant funding for $8.7 million, which they estimate could bring internet access to, to around 2,812 additional households. We're excited about this and we're thankful to Mr. Turner. I know he worked really hard with those companies. That was open to companies and to local governments, it's my understanding. And I believe we had three area companies that applied and True Vista was awarded that. So we're very grateful for that. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Lewis Laird. He's a, a, he's a resident of Franklin County. He's a veteran of the armed services. He's donated his time for years to pick up litter along the roadsides. Uh, and you may see him in blue coveralls walking around picking up litter. He's done that for years. He buys his own trash bags and he gives his own time and uh, all because he wants to make a difference. Uh, so we want to thank him. And if you see him out along the roadsides picking up trash, we want to thank him for that. If you have opportunity, tell him thank you. And uh, this is just a reminder. We're going to meet next for a work session on February 22nd. Uh, Mr. Franklin, do you have any announcements? Uh, okay. Commissioner Foster? No, I mean. Okay. Commissioner Foster? Mr. Wester? I just want to thank uh, the road department and uh, Mr. Nick Johnson. Uh, we got an ongoing situation that is not, it's out of, out of the county's hands per se, but uh, they have worked hard to get it under control, uh, keeping everybody informed over there. And, and everything so uh, just a great job by Nick and them taking 
taking on something that's hurting the county road but isn't a county issue. I guess you could say, but the uh, road department's done a really good job with, with trying to get that taken care of. And, and uh, they do have a game plan that they think within the next couple of weeks we'll have that taken care of and we won't have to worry about the road or any kind of deterioration or anything from it. So. We, we do appreciate them. Uh, Any time that I've had an issue where somebody said to me, there's a pothole or this road needs to be repaired, I just ask them and they take care of it right away. So we appreciate their work. Uh, The next item is to adjourn. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Commissioner Wester's made a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? No, second. All right, thank you. Commissioner Foster, second to the motion. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries four to zero, and we stand adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight.